Welcome back to the 27 and to episode 3 part 1 of Setup Shorts. Today we'll be taking a look at one of the most effective, underutilized, and misunderstood setup adjustments that sim racers can make, dampers. This part we will focus on how dampers can help with chassis control, what it does, why it's important. If you have watched episode 1 and 2, you know that springs and ARBs help us control the stiffness of the car and how that can affect handling characteristics. Dampers allow us to control this on an individual wheel basis. On a mechanical level, dampers work hand in hand with each spring to control the compression and decompression of that spring. What that means to us is how they transfer stiffness, load, and grip to each of the tires. One of the biggest obstacles to damper adjustments for new players and veterans alike is how overwhelming the setup screen itself can be, but it's less complicated than you think. If you see low speed and high speed damper adjustments, you're dealing with what is called a four-way damping system. This allows us to control damping for not only the chassis of the car, low speed, but also how it handles high speed damping, which is track bumps, rumble strips, and curbs. They are two different things entirely, and depending on what you're looking to do, you can disregard the rest. If you see a car that just has adjustments in the low speed sections only, these are two-way dampers, or in other words, just dampers. They have to go somewhere on the screen, they just handle it all. So what do bump and rebound do exactly? Well, simply they manage the car when it's in what we call the transient state, when the weight of the car is shifting. This only happens when you're registering a wheel, throttle, or brake input. Think when you hit the brakes and turn in hard for a corner. This is transient. The chassis of the car is actively moving. It's actively shifting from rear to the front, from one side to the other. Any other time, the car is in what's known as steady state. When your hands aren't moving that much, the throttle is on the floor, the weight has already shifted. Here the dampers are not active. Think Think of a long flowing corner where you've already hit the brakes and you've turned in. Your foot is on the gas and the chassis is moving very little. That car is in steady state. Transit is important because it gets the car kick-started in the right ways without upsetting its overall balance. You've got your springs where you want them to be, your ARBs are balanced, and the car is rotating mid-corner how you like it. But you need a little extra oomph from the fronts on turn-in or a little less bite on the rears on exit. The dampers are where you will look. Let's start first with bump. The easiest way I can explain it is, bump controls how the wheels compress and the traction of the tires when they are loading. Just like springs, the stiffer the bump on any of the wheels, the faster the load is transferred to that wheel, which creates reactiveness. On the front end, this means a nice initial response to your wheel inputs, but a tendency to understeer. To demonstrate this, we're at Kansai Circuit, this time in the ARC Camaro. On the left side of the screen, we have increased the front bump stiffness, and on the right, we have decreased it. Pay particular attention to how the car responds to wheel inputs in the trail braking zone and initial turn-in. Notice on the left how the car seems reluctant to initially turn, but once the car reaches mid-corner, due to the aggravated wheel inputs, the car gets out of shape. On the right, The car follows its front much more readily, however almost too much as the car indeed wants to over-rotate too soon. Front bump will help you manage the car in the following ways. On initial braking and trail braking, a stiff front bump damper will have a tendency to lock up. Soft front bump dampers will be more grippy, perhaps too much, and the back end will want to step out. On initial turn-in, stiff front bump dampers will react quickly and tend to understeer into the corner. Soft front bump dampers will react more gradually, providing more grip, slower, and tend towards oversteer. If your car has not enough bite on braking and turn-in, or too much, adjusting the front bump dampers could be something you could try. With this next example, we are moving to the rear of the car. On the left, we have increased the rear bump stiffness, and on the right, we have softened them. Pay attention to how the car reacts to initial throttle inputs this time, mid-corner to exit. On the left, as soon as the throttle is engaged, you see a tendency for the car to instantly want to power slide. 
On the right, this power slide is much more subdued, in fact, mostly non-existent, and if it does, it's much more deliberate. Rear bunk dampers will help you manage the car in the following ways. On initial throttle inputs, a stiff bump damper will react aggressively and snappy, leading to oversteer tendencies on exit. Soft bump dampers will react more smoothly and gradually with less snap. The power of the car is a big factor in this and how aggressive you are on the throttle as well. Know thy car, know thyself. Softening the bump will not take away all instances of oversteer. What you're looking for is a less punishing reaction to the throttle. No more, no less. If your car reacts aggressively to initial throttle inputs, leading to snappy rear end behavior, or perhaps you want a little bit more, adjusting the rear bump dampers could be a setup adjustment you could try. Let's move on to rebound, which is probably the more difficult to understand as you see bump kind of mimics what the springs do, if you can recall from episode one. But rebound is arguably more important to chassis control. Rebound controls how the tires decompress. They manage the weight of the car chassis when the car wants to unload. Think when you are braking heavily and the rear of the car seems like it wants to lift off the ground. The most fascinating and mind-bending thing about rebound is when the tires are unloading, that weight doesn't disappear. It's shifting that load to the other wheels, which is where the cornering characteristics come from. We're back in the Formula Trainer Advanced this time. On the left side of the screen, we have increased the rear rebound stiffness, and on the right, we have decreased it. I'd like you to pay attention to corner entry and how the car responds when lifting off throttle. You heard me correctly. The rear rebound dampers control the cornering characteristics of the car on corner entry. On the left, the car is hyper-reactive to trail braking and wants to step out. Mid-corner, the car is rotating as the rear is sliding around the front. Contrast this with the car on the right. Entries are much more deliberate and stable. There is a throttle steer present, yes but almost too little too late. Rear rebound dampers will help you manage the car in the following ways. On initial turn-in, corner entry, stiff rear rebound dampers transfer the load of the car to the front tires, which will lead to oversteer characteristics on entry. Softer rear rebound dampers will do the opposite. They will keep more load on the rear tires, which will lead to understeer characteristics on entry. When lifting off throttle and mid-corner, Stiff rear rebound dampers will provide a throttle steer effect. The rear end of the car will have less grip compared to the front. Going too far may in fact lead to the dreaded liftoff oversteer, especially on cars with open differentials. Softer rear rebounds will lessen the throttle steer effect. On initial turn-in, if the car is not responding the way you like it, or it's responding too much, rear rebound damper adjustments could be in order. Keep in mind, this will also affect how the car responds to lifting off throttle. So for example, if the car is turning in nicely but wants to step out on you when you're coming off throttle mid-corner, I wouldn't go any further. In fact, you might want to soften the rear rebound dampers and try to find better turn-in in some other way. And this other way could be in the front of the car. On the left side of the screen, we have stiffened the front rebound dampers, and on the right, we have softened them. This one is a lot more subtle than the others. Notice how the car on the left responds to turn in really well. It's not overreactive. It seems to be just right, but when back on power, the car starts understeering slightly. The car on the right is slightly more stable on entry, more controllable, but also follows its nose on corner exit a bit better. On the exit of the hairpin though, you can see how the fronts have much more grip and the car gets out of shape. Front rebound dampers will help you manage the car in the following ways. On initial turn-in, corner entry, a stiff front rebound damper will transfer load from the inside wheel, increasing load on the outside wheel, which will provide more cornering and tendency to oversteer. Soft front rebound dampers will do the opposite. Because less load is being transferred to the outside tire, the outside tire will have less grip potential and tend to understeer. On corner exit, stiff front rebounds will transfer load to the rears of the tire, which will provide an understeer effect. Soft front rebound dampers will transfer less load to the rear, keeping more in the front, and provide more corner exit turning ability. So again, we're making trades here. If your car is turning in too aggressively and understeering on exit, 
softer front rebound dampers could be in order. Now for some very important notes and caveats. Everything I have described above is for a symmetrical build, and you would be correct if you notice that making symmetrical changes come with benefit in one area and a negative in another. We're making trades. For example, if you increase the front rebound stiffness on the car to help with corner entry, it might have a negative impact on corner exit, so it's important to isolate the more pressing needs and try to find solutions in other areas if you can. You may also have noticed that bump and rebound work in pairs and trios, transferring and taking on more load. When one or two tires are in the bump phase, others will be in rebound. Do not fret, you do not have to understand this all in one go. Next time you are out and about in your own car, doing errands or whatever, try a mental exercise and pay attention to which wheels are loading and unloading when you're going around bends or when you're accelerating and, and try to imagine how the grip character for each of the wheels is changing. The beauty of the damper is you can adjust them asymmetrically though. This can help you protect individual tires at certain tracks. For example, Cascaval. The right front tire takes a beating, meaning it's understeering a lot. Dampers could be your solution for keeping the right front closer to the optimal temp window in an otherwise balanced car. You would do this by increasing the oversteer characteristics of the car on left-hand turns. Because of these things, you don't want to do too much damper work. You can quickly get in the weeds, so start small, notice an improvement, move on. Because rebound is so important to chassis control, they are typically stiffer than the bump dampers by a few clicks. This is normal. There may be exceptions to this on certain cars, but that would entirely depend on you as well. Rebound dampers are also vitally important the more aero a car has. Although stiff rebounds do have mechanical effects, the more aero a car has, the more important a stable aero platform becomes. Rebound provides this aero stability. By way of summation, I'm going to give you some recommendations on a situational basis with a prioritized list of adjustments. Keep in mind these are symmetrical as well. For initial braking, you're going to want to adjust the front bump dampers. If your car is locking up, try softening them. If you have a twitchy rear end on braking, try stiffening the front bump dampers. For trail braking and initial cornering, if your car has a tendency to oversteer, Soften the rear rebound dampers and then stiffen the front bump dampers. The last thing I would do is soften the front rebound dampers, but be careful this causes oversteer on exit. For understeer on trail braking and corner entry, stiffening the rear rebound dampers is the number one choice here. Then softening the front bump dampers. Finally, you could stiffen the front rebound dampers, but again, this causes understeer on exit. For mid-corner coming off throttle, you're going to want to adjust rear rebound dampers. If you'd like more throttle steer effect, you're going to want to stiffen them. If there's too much throttle steer, or perhaps even lift off oversteer, you're going to want to soften them. Mid-corner, when you're applying the throttle, this is where you will adjust the rear bump dampers. Soften them if the car feels snappy, but otherwise, keep them as stiff as possible. You don't want the car wobbling all over the place. On corner exit, if you're experiencing oversteer, the first thing you're going to want to try is stiffening the front rebound dampers. That's right, front. This will cause entry oversteer though. The next thing you would want to do is soften the rear bump dampers. For understeer, the opposite. Soften the front rebound dampers. Beware, this will cause entry understeer. But also you could try stiffening the rear bump dampers as well. After you have practice with the above, you might want to experiment with asymmetrical damper packages. I do all the time. You simply take the principles I mentioned here and isolate in your mind which wheels are in the bump phase and which wheels are in rebound when they are turning left or right. So that's it. Dampers. That's a pretty heavy subject, guys, and I'm proud of you for sticking with it. With part two, we will be discussing traction a little bit more, but mostly it will be about what high speed damping is. Believe me, it will be a lot less complicated than this one. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button if you'd like to be updated when these episodes come out. We're going to be covering everything setup wise to help give you a better grasp of setups and car mechanics. In the meantime, thanks for watching and take care.